I'm going to start with a couple questions that I got via email. So this question says, I have bad communication skills. I find it easy to talk to strangers, but struggle with my own friends and my girlfriend. When we fight, I tend to shut down. I feel like I only make things worse when I speak to her. She says she feels alone around me. So there's a couple layers here that I think are really valuable. And the first one is this question asker has already identified how much easier they find it to speak with strangers than they do to speak with friends and their girlfriend. And my first line of suggestions and or questioning would be to do some reflection work, some journaling, maybe some discussion with your coach or a coach or your accountability partners to consider what it is that feels different about speaking with your friends or your girlfriend than it does to speak with a stranger. Likely, there are some fears that are coming up when you're speaking with people that know you versus people that don't know you. It could be any number of things. Some of the things that come to mind that might explain the challenge that you feel in speaking with people that know you already versus people that don't is like, if people don't know you, then you can show up however you want. If people already know you, then there is perhaps maybe some perceived expectation for you to show up as they think you should be, or as you think they want you to be, right? Maybe there's a layer of well, I have to show up a certain way in order to make sure that this person still likes me or to not disappoint them or to not, you know, make them mad or anything like that. And those are all really understandable and normal feelings. A lot of the work that I do, and we've talked about this in many past sessions, is in helping people to understand that ultimately the value of this work and the way that it has the potential to absolutely change your life is by helping you to understand the value of turning towards your feelings. We have all grown up in, and most of us at least, in an environment that told us to disregard our feelings. You know, in a lot of circumstances, we are punished for acknowledging our feelings. Like, don't get mad right now, rein it in. You know, don't be crying, don't be sad, like be a man. That kind of stuff, which is really actually very hurtful and challenging for all of us because the reality is either emotions get expressed or they get squished down into a closet somewhere to cause problems later. They cannot be just like eliminated by like sneaking out the back door. So the only way to stop emotions from being stored in your body and or causing problems for you later is by feeling them, which doesn't necessarily mean that you have to act on the thing that the emotion is asking you to do. So let's say you're feeling some anger and the anger is asking you to punch a wall or scream at somebody. You get to decide if you're going to choose that action, but learning how to feel the anger without having that be expressed as screaming at someone or punching a wall is the work. And when you figure out how to do that, you suddenly gain access to a well of information about what your body and mind are asking for. So in this case, with this question asker, chances are he's feeling some type of fear or hesitation or worry or anxiety around what might happen in a deeper or more honest conversation with people that already know him. And somewhere in the vein of like worried about letting them down, worried about disappointing them, worrying about showing them the real him and then maybe they won't like him anymore or something along those lines. And the more that you can get in touch with the feelings that you're feeling, the more you can understand how to navigate them, right? And the more you can get in touch with feelings, the deeper you're going to be able to have conversations or connections with other people, right? You can only meet someone as deeply as you have met yourself. And so to really gain the depth of connection and, you know, non-romantic intimacy that people are really probably searching for in terms of friendship or partnership, in terms of like, this person really knows me and they accept me at that level it really comes from you feeling more comfortable with what you're feeling and figuring out how to slowly be able to share that with other people. Right? And I would encourage everybody to do this at a slow pace. Whenever you're ready, here are four ways that Porn Reboot can help you out for free. 
The first way is to subscribe to our channel and make sure that you click on the notification bell to get a new video every other day. The second way is to actually get a free copy of my book, Confessions of a Porn Addict, Seven Secrets of Porn Free Men, where you'll learn about my personal struggle and the lessons I learned over the past 14 years, as well as get strategies for putting together your own personalized reboot plan and ending your compulsive behavior with pornography or masturbation. So click on the link in the description below this video to get the free ebook. And thirdly, if you're not sure where you'd like to start, but you'd like to learn more about my team and I, or you'd like to spend time with more like-minded professionals like entrepreneurs, business owners, men who work in sales or consulting or high-level jobs, men who are controlling their behavior, then join our free and confidential group, the Porn Reboot Group on Facebook. There's also a link to join the group in the description below this video. And finally, if you need our help right now because you have a burning issue, it's an emergency. Your behavior with pornography is hurting you mentally. You're about to lose your relationship and you want to live up to your potential or be an authentic man and free yourself from shame, guilt, and underachieving? Then click on the link in the description below this video that actually says free coaching call or visit elevatedrecovery.org and click on the link which says book a call.